the last and final release month for Robot Legions. So I say we give them a send off with the clamps. It's time for another copycat color scheme. This one, I think a little more faded than the others, but also a little more of a challenge since normally I pick characters with lots of color and detail, but not this time. Because the model I'll be working on is a Robot Legion's Tri-Scorpion from One Page Rules, which you can find a link to their Patreon in the description below. These melee monsters do normally look quite intimidating and fierce, but when I take those properties together in my mind along with other keywords, robot and claws, well, there's someone that sticks out for me. Oops. And that's of course Clamps from Futurama, which is going to be a bit of a struggle because he only has a few basic colors. A yellowish greenish brown for his body, a darker version of that for his arms and legs, as well as a yellow green glow to his eyes and mouth, and one large black scar, though inside the Clamps also has a bit of normal steel to them, which I think is just the right amount to work with. So, when do I start? I think the best way to start tackling this is to actually go from the inside out, starting with Clamps' leg and arm color instead of his overall color. So to find the right mix, I want to get the base color first before darkening it up for the base coat. I've got raw umber, yellow oxide, phthalo green, and ivory black on the palette, because I'm not sure what kind of mix I'm going to need for it, but I do have an idea of where to start. And that's with yellow oxide and black. Ivory black as a pigment is blue shifted which means when mixed with yellow, we actually get a green. And this is where I'm probably going to start with his normal color too. But for this, I'm certainly going to want to add more of the brown to get a darker brown, which is actually looking pretty good for the base. So I'll just add more black to get the starting layer. Well, I say starting layer, but since I know the lighter yellow green is going to need to start from a bit lighter base, I primed him gray. So I'm actually going to fill in all the under armor with some black first. Mostly carbon black, really but with some of the raw umber mixed in, so it's in actuality just a really, really dark brown. By doing this layer, I can keep some of the lining and end with a darker appearance for this color overall, which will contrast with the lighter color I'll end up with for the body. For the base layer that I mixed up before, once the black's all dried up, I'll put down a base of this brown, but carefully, avoiding deep recesses as best I can so that they remain with a bit of the lining. Since Clamps is a bit of a flat color, I'm going to go a little bit of that root here. But what that means is there won't be any edge highlighting on the model at the end. So I'm going to need the leftover lining to really separate parts out. And because that flat color is key, I have to do this base color twice to make sure that it has an opaque finish. For the original color that was mixed up, I want to do an unblended highlight to retain that cartoonish look. But that means I really have to make the line between highlight and shade a perfect line. So I'm going to highlight the area where I think the majority of the highlight will go, but I want to think of the highlight like an off switch. It's either on or it's off. Either it's this color or it's not. I don't want any blending whatsoever and full opaque layers, almost like a cell shading, which is a style I've never tried before. So we'll have to see how good this ends up being, but I'm not quite done with just that. Since it's a metallic, technically, I want to give it some even brighter highlights but try and keep that cell shading. So I'll start by just adding a bit more of the yellow and a tiny bit of white to the mix. Using a fine-ish brush, I'll create a single solid line along the rounded edges of places as a reflection line. And in the flatter areas, pick out a square or circle. I think the secret to this look is going to be to make sure there's enough difference in color between the layers, but not so much that it's a huge jump. And to make sure the lines are crisp and solid, so like the other two layers, I'll make sure to go over this as many times as needed to have it end as a solid, opaque layer. Time to get the bulk of the body and the main color for it. This is where I have to really mix and match to figure out exactly how to make this color, since it's not often something you'd find in a bottle. 
I'll start with the black and yellow oxide again, but maybe add a little bit of the green to get a different hue to the brown under armor. But take it really carefully, because green has a high tinting strength, and too much will just make it green. This looks about right, so I'll start by adding a little more black to get a base layer to start with. The key to this undercoat is going to be the opposite, yet same thing as the dark version, and that is to touch up all the bright areas with some gray primer. Like I did for the black, this is going to make sure I can get a nice, even coverage of this color's base with fewer coats, since there's nothing harder for pigments to cover than the absolute contrast between black and white undercoats. Then it becomes a mission for total coverage, making sure to have some matte medium mixed in to help determine when it's a flat color, starting with just a light base coat of the darkened base color painted evenly all over. Once again though, trying to stay away from the black lining already set up in the deep recesses of the model. When it dries fully, another thin coat. Though I like to think the second one always goes a bit faster because you don't have to worry too much about filling in those edges. Then, more coats as needed until this is one solid color. For the base color, it's going to be a game of phases and picking out which faces will stay darker and which ones will get a full coverage of this one. Most of the armor parts are square or plated in nature, which means we can simply pick full faces to either leave dark or get a lighter shade. If I hold the model towards my eyes as if they're the light source, which I always choose over his right shoulder, then I would only cover those surfaces that I can even see from that angle, but turned a little bit too, since I will have another highlight layer to go. For the rounded parts, it's the same idea, but should end up with some kind of rounded edge as it tapers off into the darkness. Normally, I'd blend it out for this, but this time around, I want a nice, flat, circular edge. I'll add just a bit more of the yellow oxide and white again for a highlight layer. I think one of the tricks to this is to maintain a lot of saturation, which is why I never add just pure white. It always has some of that yellow to offset it. With the highlight, I want to again paint the faces that face my light source, but when it comes to the sketchy areas that could be in or out, I think the easiest course of action is to paint it 50-50, dividing it down the middle with the lighter tone on the far side from the light. Since flat planes like these catch light on the far sides rather than the close side. The same is not true for rounded areas though, and those just get their highlight in the middle as normal. One thing that matches both clamps and the robot legions is they both have scars. In the model's case, there's lots of dings and dents that cover the external armor, which we can use to create interest around the flat colors we have going on, starting by just making them black. No extra brown in it or anything, just a pure opaque carbon black, painted inside each of the dents carefully. Though I can add a bit of flair with some scratches and damage that isn't sculpted as well, though I have to rein myself in a bit and not slash this guy to ribbons with black either. The final one will be to mimic Clamp's scar on his cheek, because it wouldn't be a copycat paint job without it. Time to get the fine tip brush out, because the next step is going to take some precision. Since Clamps has some steel in his clamps, and our Triscorpion won't, I'm going to shift that color to the inside of the scratches as though steel has been revealed through the paint. I'm not going to use metallics though, since I want to keep the cartoon vibe going on and instead mix just a bit of the raw umber into a 50-50 black-white mix to sub in for the steel color. Paint it even more carefully in the middle of every scratch and chip, making sure to leave a nice outline of that black around the revealed metal. Now I add some more white into the steel mix and either highlight with a soft stroke just in the middle of any scratch, or where there's a larger patch, I'll stipple instead to give the metal a bit of texture like it's been battered and banged some. Last is to actually go back a step to get our highlight color from the previous section and add a tiny bit more white to it. Because these are paint chips and scratches, one thing we like to do is to edge highlight where the paint's chipped away to introduce a bit of depth to it. I don't want to make this line too thick, but I do want to give just the edges of each scratch a thin outline with this lighter shade. Since it's only highlighting the scratches, it shouldn't interfere with our cartoon look but add some of that detail we're used to with miniatures. The only thing left now is to introduce some glow since Clamp's eyes and mouth glow when he talks. I'm going to use a light yellow for it by just mixing yellow oxide and white. 
but add a tiny bit of green so it's still got the right tint from our reference. Obviously this is going to go into his eyes and face parts, but since we have a much larger model, I'm going to go out seeking many more places for this glow to go, being very careful to try not to get it outside the depths I want it emanating from. Like the scratches, I'm going to add even more white and highlight the centers of each glowing area. It would be like the center of a light bulb, where it's brightest compared to the light it gives off around it. Basically, the easy way to think about it is it's just shading, but getting brighter the deeper we go, instead of darker. Now, at this point, I'd normally highlight the edges and use my airbrush to feather the glow's fade off into the surrounding area. But I think that would just be a little too real for what the goal is. So I'm actually going to go the opposite direction, getting out the fine detail brush again, along with the carbon black. Mixing in a bit of the yellow oxide again, since I don't want this pure black. Then I'm going to do my steady best to outline the edges inside the glowing areas, creating a shaded barrier between the painted plate and the glowing light. My thought here is that with the huge change in contrast from super light to super dark to light again, it'll tell our brains that what we're seeing is a glow, but without the emanations we expect to see with a glow. So, an interesting thing happened. What I thought was going to be just a silly little color scheme, copying a cartoon character who happened to have the same appendages as the model, ended up looking like pretty natural colors for a scorpion. It was only after it was painted that I realized I might have ended up with a scheme like this if I was trying to do a scorpion green. So that was neat. The cell shading was a lot harder than I thought it would be too, since you really need to pile on the layers to get something opaque and flat with a brush. So while it might only be three colors per section, each one had to be done three times. However, I do like the look, especially when you catch it at the right angle. I also know that a special kind of paint may have made it a bit easier compared to the standard stuff I use. Since normally for blending, we do want a bit of transparency to our paints, that's what made it difficult to build up. But with an acrylic gouache, which are designed to get flat opaque results by having just a ridiculous amount of pigment in the binder, it may have gotten better results. But that's for another time. Please subscribe if you'd like to see more videos like this one, or just other fun things to do with painting miniatures. And until next time, enjoy your own painting journey.